Welcome to the second portion of our examination of the migration of eastern North American monarch butterflies. I'm Noah Green, and in this video I will be discussing the biology behind how eastern monarchs are able to undergo this incredible migration discussed in the previous video. Animals and humans have used the sun as a navigation cue for generations. However, the position of the sun itself is not enough to produce reliable navigation. Let me give you an example. Imagine that you were blindfolded, taken an unknown distance in an unknown amount of time, and dropped in the middle of a body of water without any distinguishing landmarks. Would you be able to tell which direction is which by using the position of the sun? Some might say, of course, since the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, I would be able to tell you which way is east or west by if the sun was on my left or right. But remember, you do not know what time of day it is, so even if the sun is on the horizon, you would not know if it is rising or setting. Therefore, time of day becomes extremely important in the directional navigation of these animals. For example, if you knew it was 6 a.m. and the sun was on the horizon, would you be able to say the sun is in the east and thus orient yourself accordingly? This is the case with animals such as the monarch who cannot use a compass or other navigational tools that we humans use to get around. Therefore, they must use the position of the sun as well as the time of day to navigate in the correct direction. Monarchs can locate the sun in two different ways. The first involves cells within the central section of their compound eye. These cells can directly detect the position of the sun. However, if the position of the sun is obscured by clouds or ground cover, monarchs can instead use a patch of cells on the dorsal portion of their eye. These cells can detect the polarization of UV rays from the sun, which change as the sun traverses the sky. Monarchs can use this information to extrapolate the location of the sun as long as they can see at least a small patch of clear blue sky. Monarchs then combine this information about sun position with timing information obtained through their internal circadian rhythms, also known as their biological clocks. Like many animals, the monarch has an internal molecular clock in almost every cell in its body. However, for the purposes of studying time-compensated sun compass navigation, we will be concentrating on the clocks located in their antenna. The antenna contain clock cells that impart time of day information to the central complex in their brain. The central complex then integrates sun position information from their eye and timing information from their antenna into a useful signal that will eventually lead to the direction they fly. Now imagine a butterfly beginning a migration. It gathers information about the position of the sun using one or both of the two areas of its eye. It also has information about the time of day from its antennal clocks. The central complex integrates that information to give the butterfly a directional heading. For example, if a butterfly was aiming to migrate southwest, which is the direction the majority of butterflies orient in a fall migration, and it was 10 a.m., the butterfly would know that in order to travel southwest, they would want to put the sun towards their left and slightly behind them. Now I'd like you to take a minute and think about where the butterfly would want to position the sun if it was to continue on its southwesterly course at 4 p.m. If you said to their right, you would be correct, since the sun would be in the western sky. It is important to note that in the northern hemisphere, the sun traverses the southern aspect of the sky, so when traveling southwest, the butterflies put the sun slightly behind them in the morning and slightly in front of them during the afternoon. Now imagine that you flew a group of butterflies six time zones to the west, which would mean that the butterfly's clock would be set six hours ahead, or advanced, of the local time. Therefore, if it was 10 a.m. local time, the butterflies would think that it would be 4 p.m. their time, which would mean they would want to put the sun on their right to travel southwest. Now I would like you to take a minute, pause the video, and think about which direction these butterflies would travel in this situation. If you chose southeast, you are correct, since the sun would be in the eastern sky while they believe it should be in the western sky. Therefore, by putting the sun on their right, the butterflies misnavigate and travel southeast instead of southwest. Let's think about it another way. If you think about the direction of travel as an arrow on a compass face and the butterfly's internal time matches up with the local time, they would be able to travel in any direction on that compass face they wanted. However, 
For each hour the butterfly time is shifted from the local time, they would misnavigate by 15 degrees on that compass face. Because 360 degrees on a compass divided by 24 hours in a day equals 15 degrees per hour. It is also useful to know that if the butterflies are advanced, that is, if the local time is behind the butterfly time, they will misnavigate in a counterclockwise direction on the compass face. If they are delayed, if the local time is ahead of the butterfly time, they will misnavigate in a clockwise direction on the compass face. That is the basic concept of how monarch butterflies are able to navigate using the position of the sun as well as their internal circadian time. I hope you have enjoyed these videos and I encourage you to solidify your knowledge of these concepts by taking advantage of the practice problems and interactive diagram following these videos. Thank you very much for your time and attention.